we are now going to extend our capabilities of solving quadratics by factoring by being able to factor some of those polynom quadratic polynomials that have a number other than one for its leading coefficient. Okay, just like the um, method that had one for the leading coefficient, I'm going to show you where the pattern comes from so you understand the work that I'm going to do. So in the last case, we had x plus a number times x plus another number. And we ended up multiplying that together and figuring out that I needed two numbers that multiplied to the last that added to the middle. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we may have coefficients in front of these two things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, again, foil this thing out, and then we're going to see what pattern of these matches this upper pattern. So if I multiply these out, first is R, S, X, X, which is R, S, X squared. Then I'm going to do the outers, R, Q. So I'm going to write Q, R, X. Then P, S, X. Then P, Q. Okay, and again, I can factor out the x out of that middle section. Okay, and our last number up here, this c term, has to come up again from these um, the last terms of this, our first number has to come up with the product of these two first numbers. So I've got the last number and I've got the first number. Okay, and the middle number comes up with the combination of the addition of this multiplication problem. What we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up coming up with our original equation. Then we're going to split this middle part out so that I can factor it by grouping it this way and this way, like we learned how to factor by grouping. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that's where it came from. So I'm going to want to have, um, when we go to do this method, we're going to, our little diamond, for part of our setup for splitting this up, I want two numbers that multiply to the A times C that add to the B term. Okay? This is, these two numbers are not going to be my overall solution, but they're going to help me go from here to here so I can factor it by grouping. Best to show you an example y equals 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Remember, this is your a, this is your b, this is your c. I need two numbers that multiply to 2 times 3, which is 6, that add to 5. So those two numbers are 2 and 3. What we're going to do now is we're going to take this 5x and we're going to split it up into these two pieces, a part that's 2 and a part that's 3. So we're going to copy the first term, copy the last term, and then this 5x is going to become a 2x plus a... 3x. So notice these two equations are mathematically the same. All I did was split the middle number up so that it is a sum. And now I'm going to factor by grouping. And I told you factoring by grouping, you put parentheses around the first pair, parentheses around the second pair, plus sign in the middle. 
find the greatest common factor of the twos here, which would be two. Then take the lowest power of every variable that appears in every term, which would be x, and the lowest power is to the first. Now divide each term by your common factor. 2x squared divided by 2x is x. 2x divided by 2x is 1. Find the greatest common factor between the threes, which is 3. There are no variables over here, so I'm done there. Now divide each term. 3x divided by 3 is x. 3 divided by 3 is 1. If you did this correctly, the things that are inside of the parentheses are the same, which means you can now combine what's outside of the parentheses. and multiply it by what is inside the parentheses. So that is factored. And now we can use the zero product property to solve this by setting each of these equal to zero. And I'm going to show you my shortcut. The shortcut is to change this sign and then divide by this number. So I'm going to write negative 3 over 2. x equals negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. So once you have it in factored form, use that shortcut. Change the sign of the last term and divide by the coefficient of the first term. Change the sign of the last term, divide by the coefficient of the first term. So that shortcut should help you out. Now, You want to try to make reasonable choices. This 2 and this 3 could have ended up in either location. Okay? I typically try to see if, if I'm going to put this 2 somewhere, I want to have something that's got a factor of 2 in it also with what I'm pairing it up with. The same thing with the 3s. If at all possible, I want to try to pair things up so when I do my factoring by grouping, I know I have common factors to pull things out. Again, I'm going to do several more examples. And the only way to get good at this is to practice. Some of them are easier. Okay? If the um, first and last terms are prime numbers, like these two were, you usually come up with fairly, fairly easy solutions. If they're composite numbers, though, um, some of the solutions are going to be harder to come by. Um, it's just going to take you a little bit more time. And again, practice is going to help you out on this. Next one, y equals 6x squared plus 5x plus 1. Now, before I make my diamond, I'm going to basically do my setup. Okay, what I did is I copied the first and last two terms, and then I'm going to split that middle term. I need two numbers that multiply to 6 that add to 5. Hey, it's the exact same work I had before. Okay? So I need a 2 and a 3. Okay? Put the 2 here. I'll put the 3 here. And now I'm going to factor by grouping. To factor by grouping, you put parentheses around the first two, parentheses around the last two, plus sign in between the two. Find the greatest common factor of the first group. Greatest common factor between 6 and 2 is 2. Then you want to find the lowest power of every variable that appears in every term. x appears in every term, and its lowest power is 1. Divide by that greatest common factor. 6 divided by 2 is 3. x squared divided by x is x. 2x divided by 2x is 1 plus greatest common factor between 1 and 3 is 1. Um, and there are no x's. So I can just write, I'm going to dot this 1 in. You don't need to write that 1 down. So all I have left is the 3x plus 1. And the reason why I dotted in that 1 is so you remember, hey, there is a 1 in front of that. Because our next step was, hey, if what's inside the parentheses is the same, then I can combine what's outside the parentheses. 
And remember, if you don't have anything that's outside the parentheses, there is an invisible one there. So I'm going to combine it. I have 2x plus 1 times 3x plus 1. Shortcut to solving. Change this sign. Divide by that number. So x is equal to negative 1 half or x is equal to negative 1 third. So um, make sure that you do the setup. And the reason why I did this one, even though these numbers were the same for the middle part, was to show you that you that one is important there. Next example. Y equals 3x squared plus 7x plus 4. I always do my setup first before I even think about the multiplying. So now I need two numbers that multiply to 12, first and last, that add to 7. In that case, it's 3 and 4. Now notice the 3 can match this 3, the 4 can match that 4. You can get the same answer by putting the 4 here and the 3 here, but make your life easier and put the 3 here and the 4 there. So factor by grouping, parentheses around the first two, parentheses around the last two, plus sign in between the two. Find the greatest common factor of 3 and 3, which is 3. Then the lowest power of every variable that appears in every term. X appears in every term, and its lowest power is the first. Then divide by the greatest common factor of those two terms. 3x squared divided by 3x is x. 3x divided by 3x is 1. Find the greatest common factor between 4 and 4, which is 4. There are no variables, so divide each term by 4. 4x divided by 4 is x. 4 over 4 is 1. Verify that what is inside the parentheses is the same. If it's the same, you can combine what's outside the parentheses, which is 3x plus 4, and then write down what's inside the parentheses, x plus 1. And to solve, you get x equals the opposite of this number divided by this number, negative 4 thirds. And, or x is equal to the opposite of that number, which is minus 1. The finding of the middle terms for the first three was fairly straightforward. This next one's going to be a little messier, and the next couple are going to be a little messier. But they're still solvable. So y equals 11x squared plus 2x minus 9. So I'm going to do my setup, copy the first term, plus blank x plus blank x minus 9. In this case, I want two numbers that multiply to negative 99 that add to 2. Well, look at this. 11 minus 9 is 2. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the 11 with the 11. Then I'm going to put the negative 9 here. And this is the reason why I do the setup first. okay? Because when I put parentheses around the first two terms and parentheses around the last two terms, I'm always going to have that plus sign in between the two. And then you should remember when I did factoring by grouping lesson, if that first term of this group has a negative in front of it, you're going to pull that negative out when you find the greatest common factor. So when we do this work, greatest common factor of the first term, which is 11 and 11, which would be 11. Then the lowest power of x that appears in every term would be to the first. Then do the division. 11x squared over 11x is x. 11x over 11x is 1. Greatest common factor of the last two terms is negative 9. 
So negative 9x divided by negative 9 is x. Negative 9 divided by negative 9 is a positive 1. Verify that what is inside the parentheses is the same. If what is in the parentheses is the same, you can combine what's outside the parentheses multiplied by what's inside the parentheses. To solve, you take the opposite of this number divided by this number. So the opposite of negative 9 is 9 over 11. Or x equals opposite of 1 is negative 1. Those first four examples all had pretty straightforward splits. Okay? The next three examples, the splits are not necessarily as straightforward. Actually, one of them will be straightforward, but the other ones aren't. Next example, y equals 9x squared minus 13x minus 10. So I get y equals 9x squared plus blank x plus blank x minus 10. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 90 that add to negative 13. One way to do this is to write all the factors of 90, recognizing that the biggest one, I'm going to have two different, so one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. The largest magnitude is going to be negative. You can write all of your possible factors of 90, okay? Or I'm going to show you a shortcut after we list all the possible factors of 90, um, how I go through and reason this out. So for 90, I can get 1 in 90. So 90 minus 1 is 89, which is not that, okay? Um, I can get 2 and 45. 45 minus 2 is 43. Nope. 3 and 30. Um, that does not work. 4 does not go in there. 5. 5 goes in there 18 times. 18 minus 5 is 13. Okay, so this would be the negative 18 and a positive 5. Okay, notice the 5 has something in common with the 10, and the 18 has something in common with the 9. Okay. The way I would have worked on this, instead of trying to list all the possible factor pairs out, I know 9 is 3 times 3. I know 10 is 2 times 5. And then what I do is I play around with all the possible combinations of 3, 3, 2, and 5 by looking at them. And the first thing I would have done was 9 times 2 is 18. 18 minus 5 is 13. And I would have had that pretty much quickly without doing that. Okay. So now we're going to group. Parentheses around the first two. Parentheses around the last two. Plus sign in between the two. Greatest common factor between 9 and 18 is 9. Lowest power of x is x. Divide. 9x squared divided by 9x is x. Negative 18x divided by 9x is minus 2. Greatest common factor between 5 and 10 is 5. Divide by the 5, and I get x minus 2. Same thing in the parentheses, so I can combine what's outside the parentheses to solve. Take the opposite of this, divided by that, negative 5 over 9. Or the opposite of negative 2 is a positive 2. And one more example. Again, all the examples that I do on the board, make sure they're in your notes. If you need to add extra words off to the side, please do that. Last one is 5x squared minus 27x minus 18. So I do my setup. 
y equals 5x squared plus blank x plus blank x minus 18. I need two numbers that multiply to 90 that add to negative 27. Actually, multiply to negative 90 that add to negative 27. Now, the multiplication, yep, if you couldn't have done that in your head, a calculator could have done that for you, but the calculator is not going to split this stuff up for you. And 90, the easy 90s are 9 times 10 or 3 times 30. And the 3 times 30 is going to work here if I put a negative 30 and a positive 3. Well, the 30 has a 2 in common with this and a 5 in common with this, but the 3 is not in common here. So I'm going to put the 30 with the 5. So minus 30 here and a positive 3 here. Now group, parentheses around the first two, parentheses around the last two, plus sign in between the two. Greatest common factor between 5 and negative 30 is 5. Lowest power of x in each term would be x to the first. Divide. 5x squared over 5x is x. Negative 30x over 5x is minus 6. Greatest common factor between 3 and 18 is 3. There are no x's here, so I'm done with the factor part. 3x divided by 3 is x. Negative 18 divided by 3 is minus 6. What's inside the parentheses is the same, so I can combine what's outside the parentheses multiplied by what's inside the parentheses. And to solve, you take the opposite of this divided by that, so negative 3 fifths or opposite of negative 6 is 6. Okay, those are several examples. Um, please make sure that you have all of these examples in your notes and make sure to make honest attempts at every single one of the practice problems that I gave you for this. Okay, the factoring quadratics is a skill um, that will help you immensely for any of your standardized tests. Um, again, these numbers right here are our x-intercepts. So your ACT, your SAT, when you're a junior, your smarter balance test. Um, the GRE, so graduate exam. So if you want to go into a graduate program, they still have quadratics on some of those um, graduate tests. So this stuff will help you out, help you find the intercepts. And the stuff we're doing for factoring here um, once I get to larger polynomials, we can break them up into smaller polynomials and you'll be able to continue factoring some of those larger polynomials.